when you say it out loud, it seems like you're being original, when in reality, many may be thinking about it, but just not saying it. Nigeria and its all rich meat, a poor country pretending to be rich. Nigeria throws its weight around primarily based on the size of its population and the meat that it is all rich. Take the all rich side of the story. It can't be difficult to figure out why it was a meat all along. A family can earn one million naira per month and still live from hand to mouth if it's made up of one husband, three wives, and 16 children. That's because wealth is as much about what you earn as it is about how you spend it. Most of Nigeria's oil revenue gets stolen. But even if that wasn't the case, if we shared the income per citizen without accounting for taxes or even production sharing agreements, the best the average citizen would get is four barrels per year. And that's in a given year, say during an oil boom, and oil was selling for $100 per barrel. That means the average citizen could end up with $400 per year. But when you take away the payments to the joint venture partners and you factor in the taxes, even during an oil boom, you'd be lucky to get $250 per year as a citizen. On today's numbers, with low production and extremely low oil prices, the average citizen would be lucky to go home with $50 every year. Nigeria would truly be oil rich if we had a population of, say, 20 million people. But at 200 million people, we may be rich in oil, but we are not oil rich. That meat needs to die because it feeds the laziness and greed of our politicians and the self-entitlement of some of our citizens. And the same goes for the income from our other natural resources. Irrespective of what we get from them, we have 200 mouths chasing that and looking to feed from it. That is why Nigeria is really and truly a poor country as it is today. We are not poor because we are not earning a lot of money. We are poor because we are not earning enough for ourselves because of our population size. The way out of this is to develop our human capacity. A population of 50 million with a per capita income of $50,000 is a better market than ours with 200 million. The same way 250 is greater than 120 because our 200 million has a per, per capita income of $6,000 less actually. It is time to prioritize the development of the men and women who work on Nigeria's soil because the oil and other resources beneath the soil will never be enough to prosper us all. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate your advocacy because for me it feels like we're ending on a positive note because I know the previous ones it, we're good at dissecting the problem and even uh, Bright was beginning to say that uh, it's like we, we're divorcing ourselves from the problem. But now you've come back to one of the topics I love the most, which is to invest in human capital. You know, so because yeah. sometimes people look at uh, population as a curse. They keep saying we have too many people. I've always advocated that population will never be a curse if you invest in it. And once you do, then the yeah. real glory of Nigeria will come to fall. So maybe in a way, the real curse has been oil all along. And now that the oil has clearly been exposed to have relative value, we'll go back to the thing that has you know, you say an eternal value, that's the human beings. And we have to, you know, basically put the horse before the cart. Am I alone? No, no you're, you're not. not. Alone. <laughs> you're all mesmerized. No, you're not alone. <laughs> I'm, just, I, I'm, just really, I'm just really impressed um, on how, you know, you were able to come up with those numbers and okay. you broke it down to the, the barest minimum. And for me, you know, I've always felt like, you know, we have enough. And I still think that way, because, um, I mean, we're, we're living in a, in a, in a, glo in a globalized and uh, digitalized system where our profit doesn't just come from within, right? You have people doing business from across the world. You have, you know, people investing money everywhere, and this money is like, coming back in. And it still just boils down to my perspective of being able to, um, I think one of the major points there was focusing on empowering you know, humans, Nigerians. Because if you look at China, I was doing something on um, skills development, and I discovered that, you know, major, majorly China's economy is actually based on their, their, their human capital. How much money they make from just, you know, investing in their skills and making money out of the fact that they are able to produce, you know, go to other countries, bring a lot of money back into the system. So if we're able to empower our young people mm -hmm. with the skills, especially in this digital age, Skills like, you know, digital skills when it comes to artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, virtual reality, all these skills that, that people demand, even remotely, even without actually seeing you. We're able to empower people with these skills. 
that's a lot of money coming in, mm -hmm. right? So imagine we have one, we have two thousand five hundred people earning one thousand one hundred and seventy five thousand naira in a month. Mm -hmm. Together, it's like five point six billion. That's how much money will come in in a year from just two thousand five hundred people earning one hundred and seventy five thousand naira in a month. So imagine if we have young people who are making that much money, 200,000, 250,000 in a month, times, you know, the amount of young people that we have, even if, have, even if it's 50%, because they have the skills, that's, a, that's way more than what Oye will bring in. So I, I'm really 100% with you with investing in human capital. Hmm. Well, yeah, and I'm, I'm, also, I'm also happy. Okay, no, Nafisa, go, ladies first. <laughs> oh. Such a gentleman. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I just wanted to say that out of this pandemic, two things that we should probably take out of, or at least one very important thing that we should probably take out of is education. Education and healthcare, two, okay. things, two strong things. Education, development of our human capital, and our healthcare system that, you know, it's this um, COVID-19 just really exposed how terrible the system is and how we are basically struggling to meet up. But like J um, JJ Mojua said, I do totally agree with him that we need to invest in the men and women that we have in this country. Our population doesn't have to be a course. It can be a huge, a huge, 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 huge blessing yes. only if you know how to use it well and invest in it. Because with education, you can literally do anything, not just formal education. Mm -hmm. Like Bright said, skills development, virtual reality, technology, data. The fourth industrial dev um, revolution was all in, from the World Economic Forum was all about data and how it is going to frame the world in which we are going into. But you know, Nigeria Nigeria didn't take it seriously. They were just a stakeholder. Sorry, they were just a spectator. Mm -hmm. But now I hope that we, this is something that we can take seriously, education and healthcare. Okay, before because Rugged Man speaks, Rugged Man, I want, to, I want to ask. What I, what I, wanted, I, what I wanted to say, okay, what I wanted to say, well, yeah. part, was part of what she just said. Maybe I shouldn't have let you speak. It's not just so <laughs> it's stole, your, stole your thunder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, but I was going to start with Bright. I'm happy you said, um, you said he, you were surprised at how he came up with the numbers. You know why? I was gonna, That's how I was going to start. I'm happy. You said you're happy he came up with the numbers. It's because Omajua is educated. That was how I wanted to start. Because <laughs> if you have a nation that the people, half of the people or more than half are illiterate, they cannot, even if they see an opportunity, they will most likely not even know what it is. They won't even know how no. to apply themselves to it. You understand? So education yeah. is key. Education is key. From my field, now see all the things that Bright broke down. From my field, which is entertainment, I can authoritatively tell you there was research that was done a year ago. Piracy alone takes 15 trillion a year. Nigerian entertainment, both um, um, video, audio, um, authors and magazines, fashion, they will lose 17 trillion a year to piracy. And we've been trying to get the government to come join us and fight this so that we can plug all those holes. How much is the Nigerian budget? To now imagine them getting, the, getting all the taxes, the VAT and stuff from some 15 trillion a year. And well, that's just from entertainment. Believe it or not, we're yeah, out I, of time already. I, I, I scarcely believe it well, myself. We always out of time. <laughs> we have to come back again and, and do some. But, but, but some sorry, dancing. let me just end with this. Let okay. me just end with this. Okay. Thank God I'm talking about, we're talking education. And yeah. thank God I said, I talked earlier about having people in a pos in position to make decisions who are literate, who are educated, who are mm -hmm. qualified. That way, I can authority. The only thing I can ask, tell you is, a man cannot give you what he does not have. Okay. Okay. We'll have to stop there. Well, even I look forward to this edition. Sport for choice is how I'd term it, wouldn't you? Keep watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa to stay in the picture with those big conversations. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Our voices and your voice is all it takes. So together, let's keep advocating for a better society. Till next time, it's bye for now. Yeah, Hi. happy family. <laughs>
I think mm. that to change Nigeria, we have to put the system in place to make stealing difficult, to make accountability yeah. and transparency the norm. The other day, my WhatsApp group raised about 7 million naira or thereabout. We donated. We gave the money to a young person. We gave the resources to a young person to go and donate. He went to donate in his own name. Wow. <laughs> And this is not abnormal in the reality of Nigeria. Okay, now, and now let me see. You know what happens Amadua, all over um, the place. Amadua, Amadua, now, you know the mistake you guys make? You know the mistake you make? You know the mistake you make? Why not? Why didn't somebody else? Why not you? At least I know so I can point, trust so that's you. Not the, so I'm not talking, forget why about the mistake you made. The major thing you need to check is those schools you said that happened from 62 to Abacha's time, the motive. Mm. The, what we are looking for now is different from what inspired their coup. They just want their power. Roger, so they are idealistic, and that's a good thing. Yeah, no, idealistic. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. See, I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned they had good motives like you. Kaduna, Kaduna was a good person like you. They were young people like us that actually believed that they could do much better, and that's the truth. And, the, and then what happened? The thieves in the system. How what happened? Them, they, Power happens. Brother, so, but so basically, what we are saying right now, realistically, what we are saying to each other right now is that there's no hope. I agree with restructuring that no. Nafisa said. With restructuring, yeah. each state can now begin to focus on their strengths because what we now exactly. have is one 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 system in Abuja trying to create one earthquake and hoping that that earthquake will have impact across the country. I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. But if we have 37 earthquakes at the same time. Yes, so. This is the way I see restructuring. 37 yeah. earthquakes at the same time. Even if some people's earthquake is, is very low, it's not having any effect. At least you are guaranteed that 20 of them are going to be impactful and then we can now grow together. This whole police issue. Now, yeah, I'm practically the Nigerian police customer care. As in, I get more calls than the police. As in, it's gotten so crazy that before even the police know about anything, I know about it. Then I now inform them. Yeah. It got oh, so wow. crazy. Some, some, someone called me from Abuja kidnap case. I said, Madam, call police. Why are you calling me? They kidnap your brother. You are calling me. Call the police. How can you deal with that, though, man? That's, that, uh, that's scary, man. I don't, I know. It's crazy, bro. I stopped counting at when yeah. it got to over 700 people had helped. I stopped counting when it got to 700, over 700. I just stopped counting. And I, today, 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 we're on one issue. There's an 18 year old girl that was raped by five boys, and they're trying to choose the whole issue. As in, bro, you do not want to know what I've, I've been feeling like a politician in power for the past three years because the things I've heard, nah. the things I've seen, nah. my brother, you do not want to know. Thank you, guys. It's nice less than one, one minute. Uh, nice to meet you all. Nafisa, nice to meet Thank you. Nafisa, Roger, nice to meet you. Right. Nice to meet you, right. you guys. Right. Plus TV, please edit my face well. Let's be fine. I know I'm ugly. <laughs> Try, please help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, it, it does. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.